record crowd for a women's basketball game at Pinnacle Bank Arena on hand as the Nebraska Cornhuskers cling to their NCAA tournament lives, taking on a top 10 ranked Iowa Hawkeyes squad. With only eight days left in the regular season, the race for the Big Ten title still includes the Hawkeyes. They win out, they can control their destiny and be Big Ten champions yet again. You look at the starting lineup, Shelly is of course aided by two post players, Izzy Bourne and Alexis Markowski, who are both on a streak of playing great ball the last three weeks. And that top line of players for Iowa, if it looks familiar, it's because it is. They've been starting every game since forever ago. It's cut and paste with that starting five for Iowa. They have been phenomenal with their continuity and their teamwork. Over 20 assists per contest because of their great chemistry and experience. Now, have you heard of this 22 character, Brian? Uh, you know, no, I haven't. Oh, okay. Tell well, me about her. Let me introduce. <laughs> her name's Kaylin Clark. She's the likely national player of the year this season. Third in the country in made threes, first in the country in assists, second in the country in scoring, and first in the world at providing wow moments on the court. Absolutely. I thought you were going to say first in the in the country with logo threes. <laughs> you know, logo made threes. Yeah, Caitlin Clark is in the building tonight. More than 10,000 fans in attendance for the first time ever in this decade-old building on hand as Nebraska searches for what would be one of the signature wins for their NCAA tournament resume. Caitlin Clark wastes no time hitting her first shot and Iowa strikes first. Well, Nebraska started in man-to-man -man defense, which they should. They need to stay connected to Caitlin Clark off of any screening action or loop action where she's coming to get that shot. Izzy Bourne inside tries to get a quick answer. Alexis Markowski keeps it alive. Alexis Markowski, the sophomore, leads the Big Ten with 10 rebounds per game. Offensive boards as well. She is all over it. Monica Sinano with the board. Up to Clark. These two squads have already met before this season, 22 days ago. Close game, a four-point win for Iowa. There's a turnover. I think that was Bruce Morris. Pardon me on that. Hit his back to us. According to Autumn Johnson, sitting there as one of the last four teams in the NCAA tournament as of right now. This win in front of a packed house would do wonders for them. Sinano, the step and the basket. Uh, Monica Sinano with the basics and the fundamentals down in the painted area. Her last stretch of game, she's shooting 70% from the floor. Shelly's missed her first two shots of the day. And the 37 points she had in their game on Wednesday, the most she's had in her career. Sonano again inside. That's four quick points for number 25. She is well-versed in how to operate on both blocks. One of the all-time great second-best players on the team that we'll see. Jazz Shelly driving for the first two points for the home team. We love to see the continuity there in terms of her confidence of attacking the basket and finishing there. Jazz Shelley with a fantastic finish. Sinano is on fire. I love the ten toes down. She was ready to shoot that one from the high post. Quick release on it. Nice force of turnover. Already up by seven. Warnock's pass hits a leg. There's a turnover. Sam Hybe's running against Clark. She lays it. Well, Sam Hybe, it's good to see her back and healthy. Clark from deep. Out of Nebraska ball. Amy Williams coaching at her alma mater. I asked her if they talked to the team about being an NCAA tournament bubble team. She said, yeah, we talk about it. It's on their brains, but we're smart enough to know we can't focus on that. You got to focus on the team in front of you. Absolutely. And you were talking about the importance of defense. This Iowa team averages 88 points per game. And they were talking about the pace of play, too. And they love to push it. So they've got to do their due diligence on the defensive end here this afternoon at home. That's kicking it. We'll stay here. Last time the Huskers have won a game against the Hawkeyes was four years ago, back in 2019. Shelly, who's been hunting her shot early on. Bounce past Donnie Stewart. Great defense by Warnock. Second opportunity will not go, but she'll head to the line. 
Nebraska is a 70% free throw shooting team. In the last game they played on Wednesday, Sam Heide had two free throw opportunities with 15 seconds left in the game. She missed them both. Now it ended up not mattering because the shot they lost to was a three pointer and it was a tie game, but still. Right. And, you know, I've been in that situation at the end of games and you know, it's not just about that possession, although it is very impactful. It's it's the entire game. Sinano doesn't even move the net when she shoots. Made all four shots so far. Making it look effortless on the interior is Monica Sinano. Ivy to Stewart. Well, there was a miscue there on the pick and roll read. Monica Sinano, I think, stayed too long and didn't recover quickly enough. Warnock on the drive. Rebound to Jazz Shelley. We love to see the aggression of McKenna Warnock on the offensive end, attacking downhill like that. That's Molly Davis ripping the ball away. Hawkeyes on the run. Davis throws it right to Jazz Shelley. And Jazz Shelley is just filling in defensively and found herself right in the gap on the ball line. One of the things Lisa Bluter said is Molly Davis is a great scorer. Yep. We've got to get her to want to hunt for her shot because she's got so much talent around her. She's been great at dishing the ball. They'd love to see her shoot some more. Absolutely. She's as tough as nails. Jazz Shelley's heading to One of those quad one wins was against Maryland. And Jazz Shelley, we were talking about her getting back into offensive rhythm. She had 29 points in that game alone. So. They've just been sputtering a little bit. They've had some injury issues yep. on the roster, up and down, players in and out. Jazz Shelley, one of two players for Nebraska, who started every single game. The 11th game that Amy Williams and company have played against ranked teams. They have only two wins. It's their fifth time they played someone in the top 10. Yeah, but that just speaks to the depth and the outstanding play in the Big Ten. And Clark, another one from deep, her second three so far today. That's just so smooth that she's at the top of everyone's scout. Yeah. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and still, luck. still getting the job done. I mean, that's just that just speaks to her elite level of competitive nature. Here's Clark pushing it to Stulke for two. And look at that. Pushing the tempo with the pass. You love to see it. Ten on the shot clock. Markowski backing in. The left hand on oh, the glass. Alexis Markowski averaging a double-double this season and again leading the Big Ten and rebounding with ten a contest. Clark misses a deep three-pointer. Jazz Shelley with a fast pass ripped off by Clark. She's boogieing down the lane. Shelley makes her adjust. Shot is offline. And the crowd here loves seeing Kaitlyn Clark miss a shot. Nebraska down by five. Iowa sticking with their zone. Markowski. Defensively, Monica Sinano is going to cover up on the high side. But when you do that, you've got to drop and recover. When that pass comes in and cover up that baseline side, if you're going to really commit to that high side on defense. You saw it was a very quick breather for Kaitlyn Clark. She's already back in. And Jazz Shelley is tops in the Big Ten, second, matter of fact, with 35 and a half minutes per contest, so some steadiness. Heidi locks up Clark. Take a look. She did slide that pivot foot back before the dribble, and then there's Heidi tying up Clark, who wisely decided when there was some contact just to spin out of the way like there was more of a hold. Clark hits the free throws. Markowski on Sinano. It's just a strong finish down inside by Markowski once again. Clark with six on the shot clock, double team, finds Gabby Marshall in the corner. Gabby Marshall. Her first shot of the day is good. And now Nebraska can close out the quarter. Three on the clock. Hybe will throw it up. Seven point lead for Iowa after 10 minutes. Well, they have to have that chunk of offense. They have to have that because they shoot 
34% uh, as a team from there, but they also have 35% of their offense coming from range. So if you're missing that much of what you produce, it's going to be hard to catch a team like Iowa who plays at the pace that they do. A few weeks ago, they played Rutgers and missed their first 21 three-point attempts. And we were at that yeah. game together, and it was just the main reason why they couldn't overcome that. The bank shot for Markowski. Kenna Warnock with the ball. Someone's referred to as the glue on this team, the do-everything girl, passing, rebounding, scoring, hitting threes. Shot clock at six for Sinano. Back-to-back -back misses the star post player. And she started out hot, though, so those are all great looks. Every shot that Monica Sinano has taken, those have been great looks for her skill set. Markowski will fire from deep. Warnock. Sinano keeps it alive. Somebody's got a cut. Somebody's got a cut. Uh, Sinano's down there in that pinch post area tied up with Markowski. Sinano. What a feed from Clark, who is getting double teamed. Oh, the law firm connecting on that one. And you love to see it. They, ju they just have a radar with one another. Sonano goes to where she wants to go, and Clark just finds her at the right time. Another wonderful feed inside. Markowski is now up to 12 points, a game high. hit four three-pointers so far. Recipe for lack of success is Kate Martin wide open. 23 seasons on the sidelines at Iowa. Quite a phenomenal career and just sparking the love of the game and the love of life in her student athletes. Kendall Moriarty on the drive. You don't see a lot of that. Moriarty averages only three points a game. Quickly Marshall with an answer from deep. Both teams have shot eight three-pointers. Iowa's hit five of them. Nebraska's hit one. That's your difference in the ballgame. Absolutely. Shelly. That one's good. She heard you. She's like, <laughs> you don't make it two. My call. Self-examination. You got to bring it. Clark, baseline. Falter went for the board and lost it in Nebraska ball. Markowski joined the party and knocked in some consecutive buckets. One of the storylines today, they've sold more than 12,000 tickets to this game. They've never had 10,000 people in attendance. And they're watching Jazz Shelley give herself nine points on the afternoon. But Caitlin Clark wastes no time in answering. Quieted the crowd in a heartbeat. I mean, they, they couldn't clap twice before Clark was going up for that bucket. Shelley. It's the board. Born. For three. We're tied. Nebraska on Caitlin Clark as she was driving. We'll take a timeout here. We got a brand new ball game. It's a ball screen there. Almost a three minute scoring drop for the Hawkeyes. And that comes to a close with Clark, a five footer. And they had good spacing on that possession. Got the pick and roll with Sonano. Clark was able to slip inside to finish in the paint. And Shelly out to Sam Hybe for three. And Sonano has it. Markowski is saying they're pulling my arm down on that shot. Clark. Off the glass and good. She'll head to the line with a three-point play. Rest.
Clark. Caitlin Clark has the ball right here, number 22 in black. She's going to turn the corner, create some contact there, and then take the hit by Markowski at the rim. And look at her face. Fired up. Caitlin Clark misses the shot, and Amy Williams was on the official saying, you've got to watch that push. Markowski has 12. Izzy Bourne bumps her stats up. She's got five. And she took the bump right there defensively. Got McKenna Warnock in the air. Clark at the logo. Book it! Another logo shot for number 22. Oh, no, the logo. Caitlin Clark. Let it fly. Oh, my. And the Hawkeyes force a turnover, the sixth of the half on Nebraska. Ooh, we. Caitlin Clark, you got to guard her straight up. Look how far she's looked. She's five, six feet away from the line. Caitlin Clark all net from the logo. Let's just start calling it, oh, no, the logo when she pulls from there because that's that's just insane. Well, Jerry West's nickname is the logo, but you uh, might have to lend that anymore. out. Not anymore. <laughs> she's got three three-pointers at the half, 17 points, and a chance to add to it. The bounce pass to Sonata. Two on the clock, Hybe for three. A seven point, Iowa with a seven point lead as if they get a win today, it will clinch a double bye in the Big Ten Tournament, which is two weeks away, less now, than. I love it that it's two weeks away. Iowa staying with their zone against Nebraska to open the second. Izzy Bourne connects. Bourne had only five points in the first half. She's been playing great ball recently, however. 40 points at the half for Iowa. They average 88 a game. Kate Martin has the first two of the Blue second half. Lisa Bluter has named her. Shelly with a deep three. Falls to Caitlin Clark. Warren prevented Clark from driving the lane there really nicely. Good job by Sam Hybe initially, and then Izzy Bourne as a secondary defender in transition, not allowing Clark to get loose. Nano the 10-footer. She opened the game hitting her first four field goal attempts. With ease. There's Markowski. Too strong on the shot. Great first half with 12 points. That's only her second missed field goal of the day. Clark, a deep three. She's feeling it. 20 points for Caitlin Clark. The 25th time this year that Caitlin Clark has scored 20 points. And we have 17 minutes and 46 seconds left in the game. Listen, okay, if you have not seen Caitlin Clark play, you can contest all you want to. She's going to cash out from three and then let you know what she just did. Over and over again. officially in the top 10 in Big Ten history for career points and career assists. No one has ever done that before. No one has ever done it, and that's why we have to talk about it. I mean, she is just a unique competitor. Markowski competing for the ball, a third opportunity. It will not go, but she draws the whistle. Good discipline. She leads the Big Ten in double doubles, tied with Caitlin Clark with 13 each. That's 19th best in the country, Alexis Markowski, who is probably at the top of everyone's scout. And the fact that both of them are able to understand that assignment and continue to dominate, it just speaks to the volume of their skill set. Clark on the drive, she'll head to the line, following Jazz Shelley. That's her first. Maintain contact and then go corral the ball with two high hands. Clark, an 83% free throw shooter. I mean, you mentioned it. You see the top two double doubles. And Moriarty has looked for her shot today, had some good looks. Bourne keeps it alive. Nebraska doing a good job of screening that elbow area of Iowa's zone, trying to create some leverage. Bourne reverse, strong. Playing with some joy, some extra added joy this afternoon. Martin slashing in the lane. Jazz Shelley making it impossible for Martin to score, who somehow does. Oscar sitting with a 14 and 12 record. NCAA tournament bubble team. Jazz 
as Shelly almost loses it. Now she will. It's a tie up. It'll be Iowa basketball. This is why she's the model of consistency. You put a couple of defenders in front of her, it doesn't matter. She's going to make a play happen. She plays with passion and competitive fire. Her coach has used the following phrases to refer to her. You mentioned glue earlier. Yes. She's called her the mother hen. Yes. Called her the heart and soul of the team. There it is. Selfless. Make sure everyone is okay. A valuable member. On and off the court. I mean, she's a star in that role for the team. Whip pass to Sonano inside. Alexis Markowski, she fell down, so the numbers game was the numbers game on that one. Huskers need a bucket in a bad way. Bourne delivers. Nice patience on the inside. Hard for them to win games when the threes aren't falling. Clark. You know, I talked to Amy Williams about guarding Clark, and, and she mentioned we're going to switch people on her. Sometimes you want length on her, sometimes you want speed guarding her. They do want Jazz to guard her because she's their best defender. You mentioned that the foul trouble is a real concern for anyone who's guarding. That's Molly Davis. Thought she had a clean block. It's a whistle, and that means Shelley will have three free throws. And then, you know, the headband <laughs> Most importantly. came off. So. It is loose, like I thought. But she put it right back in there. But it just doesn't look like doesn't look like it's in tight for me. I don't know. She seems to be fine with it. I, but I don't know. I mean, would you like would you like to talk to her? <laughs> yeah, tell her to come over here, right here. Look at that thing. Look, it's falling off. She's like, yep. No, no, she pulled it. No, off. she was like, it's loose. I got to put it back. Come on, man. You got to put it more forward. A lot of mama bear coming out right now. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> Shelly hits two or three. Deficit is still 11. Remember, they tied it up at 31 all. Iowa's been hitting a great percentage of their free throws. It's Maggie Mendelson getting the rebound, but the freshman stepped out of bounds. She fought for that board, though. That's what they need. They need that fight for possessions. Caitlin Clark now has 26. Well executed. Out of bounds, under set by the Hawkeyes, getting Caitlin Clark downhill off of a double stagger screen on the weak side. Oscar swinging around to Bourne, offline. Shelly fighting for it with Davis. And there's a whistle. It's going to be a foul on Molly Davis. That'll be her second. You see, I told you, look. I'm sorry to go with it, but this is Folks, terrible. it's the lead story. In her hands. Okay, you could argue a top 10 upset would be an important thing or a team clinching a double bye. No, no, no. From the winner, Scott, book of broadcasting, oh, it's headband. Again. Like, it's, it's, I mean, I didn't take it off of it. It fell off. Poor Molly's going to hear afterwards how much her. time we've spent talking about this. Molly, I love you. Girl. Just tighten up. Maddie Kroll. Driving baseline, flips it out to Moriarty. Another missed three-pointer for Nebraska. There are four of 20 on the day. You have to fake a pass to make a pass, right? Let the defense bite, and then you have clear pass. Iowa is red hot. They have made seven of their nine field goal attempts in this second half. They've been doing it in the paint in the second half as well. Plus four advantage, 26 to 22 in paint points over Nebraska. Getting the ball to Markowski worked earlier in the game. He's double. got a double team now. Moriarty will fire and score. Here comes Clark. Wow, what a feed from the freshman. Sydney a falter inside. It looked like it was going to be another turnover. That's why she got that. Markowski right on Sinino. Doesn't go, but she forces the third foul on Monica Sinano. I would take her out like she did just for now. You know, it's only one minute left in the third. It's a smart move right here by Lisa Bluter and her staff to have her take a seat and maybe bring her back like seven, eight minutes to go in the fourth. Jess Shelley's right up on Caitlin Clark. Pounding her. Clark gets swatted away by Bourne. Callan Hake with the heat. 
14,289 fans are in attendance. That is not only the most in the 10-year history of this building, that is the most in the history of Nebraska women's basketball. Phenomenal. Phenomenal energy in the building this afternoon, as it should be. Big Ten women's basketball has been at the top of the list all season long. Six teams in the top 25, four teams in the top 10 for the first time ever in Big Ten women's basketball competition. And you love to see it and feel it. Now, that being said, when this game was tied at 31, this place was rocking. It was. They didn't have much of a reason to get loud in the third quarter. What does Nebraska need to do to get them back in this? They've got to move the ball the way that they did for great shots like that. And see, that's a great shot, even though it didn't fall. There's Annie Stewart with another turnover. That's the 12th time Iowa's turned the ball over. There's tight quarters in there. Caitlin Clark had some turnstiles going defensively against her. Shelly with a smooth runner for the first points of the fourth. And that's what they need. Attack that paint. I mean, I was showing you a couple different looks defensively. Sinano. Man, that's tough to guard. And the same kind of looks on the offensive end. <laughs> Shelly just one of six from three right now. And then a turnover. Another one. Marshall has it. Clark's trying to call a timeout. Instead, she steals it for an easy two. Oh, I said to fake a pass to make a pass and sometimes you have to break a play to make a play I mean just stay alert and ready to finish And Iowa seems to be coming up with all of those 50 50 right. possessions Those scrum situations that we've seen a lot of here this afternoon oh, and an empty possession again for Nebraska We're starting to see the frustration from these Huskers as well. But look at the hustle by the Huskers they're just all over it, and then that ball just favorably goes into the hands of one Caitlin Clark. If they can hold on to this lead, they'll be one game back, each team having two matchups left. And of course, Iowa still has to play uh, Indiana one more time. Yeah, that game is that game has been sold out yeah. for a couple of weeks now. It's on Sunday, the 26th. It's at Iowa at Carver Hawkeye Arena. It's going to be an exciting game to say the least. Caitlin Clark sitting on 28 points. Jazz Shelley made it impossible for her to score, but she does it again. This is her eighth 30-point game of the season for Caitlin Clark. Incredible. I mean, just a sensational level of focus and skill set combined for Caitlin Clark. It is the 30th career 30-point game for Caitlin Clark. I mean, she's got the outside game going, shoot from the logo, and now she's got this post-up game with some crafty footwork and ball handling skills on display. Caitlin Clark bringing it inside, taking it low, and smooching it off the window. This now makes it seven games that Clark has played against Nebraska. She has scored 30 points in all seven of those matchups. Kate Martin hits a deep one. Iowa has taken advantage when Nebraska has had players on the ground. Got to make those shots, and that's the difference in this game. Nebraska's getting quality looks. Hey, guess who just got the steal? That's Taylor McCabe. She's a Nebraska native. Lisa Bluter mentioned how much she wanted her to get in the games. Nebraska has hit only one three-pointer in the second half. 11 misses from deep. Moriarty steps inside the line. That won't go. For as much as Iowa is scoring the basketball, I mean, their defense, Mike, I think is understated. Yes. Stucky for two. You know, that's something that a couple of years ago, I remember Lisa Bluter saying something to me, which is, we can't be an A-plus on offense and defense. But if we cannot be a D-minus on defense, we're going to be a great team. And that's what they worked on. And this is desperation time for Nebraska. Shots aren't falling. They lose this game, they fall to 14 and 13 on the season. You mentioned Autumn Johnson has them as the last four in going into today in the NCAA tournament. Because they, listen again, they played a brutal schedule. 11 teams ranked at the time they faced them. 
The basket goes, you can hear the roar for Taylor McCabe, who's the reigning Nebraska Gatorade Player of the Year. And there are a ton of fans and family of Taylor McCabe behind the Iowa bench, all showing the three ball with their hands. Yeah. Speaking of three balls, Jazz Shelley stops what was basically a six-minute scoring drought. Got to get some defensive stops just to have some momentum. Stucky. Locked away oh, by Mendelssohn. Again, McCabe had a section of maybe 35, 40 people right behind the bench just erupt after this shot went in. It was awesome. The entire bench, too, was up. And you love the wholesomeness of that moment. Look at everybody. Look at people behind the bench. <laughs> Lisa Bluter holding up a triple. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's a player who her freshman year has mostly been known for defense, but she can really shoot the three. She won a women's hoop three-point shooting contest at the men's final four last year. Love it. Wide open, Maddie Crawl. Back to back to back threes for Nebraska. For the Huskers. 14,000, the first time this building has had more than 10,000 for a women's game, and now they force a turnover. Jazz Shelley, there's no print in this Husker team. Three straight made three pointers. Keep fighting. Now they can get into their press at 1 2 2. They've shown that a couple times here today as well. Jazz Shelley had a great scoring performance in her last game. As Iowa answers. They just couldn't hit big shots in that third quarter in the early part of the fourth when they needed it. They are out to get revenge on that. They want to make amends on what they did in March last year. No doubt. Bumped out in the Sweet 16 by Creighton and this Nebraska team. They were 24-9 last year and went to the NCAA tournament. They want to go back. They've got, a, they've got some work to do in their last couple of games to make that a possibility. They're going to Champaign on Wednesday. They'll play Illinois. Then they have Northwestern on Sunday to end out their regular season.